Hey everyone, thank you so much for clicking this video and watching it. Just give me five or six minutes of your time. I promise I'll make it short and there's no sales pitch in this video at all. Here's the deal. If you wanna learn how to trade penny stocks, you can do it, but you have to understand the risk and the math behind penny stocks. That's the key, is understanding the risk. A lot of people, you have what I call profit goggles, right? You've heard of beer goggles. Profit goggles are you only see how much money you can make. Let's talk about how much money you can lose and how to approach penny stocks safely if you do want to trade them. It's not something I recommend personally, but if you want to trade them, let's go and look at a few and I can show you mathematically how you can approach this, what you should do, and what you should focus on. All right, guys, thanks so much for sticking with me. I really do appreciate it. There's a lot of scam artists out there talking about how much money you can make trading the stock market. Uh, or especially trading penny stocks. And what I wanna do is just something to give you the math behind it. Because if you're gonna wanna trade penny stocks, if you have a smaller account, if you're a younger trader, or maybe just don't have that much liquid cash to trade, penny stocks are exciting, I get it, right? Huge returns, small investments, but as you have to likely know, trading penny stocks likely gives the exact same probability of long-term returns as the lottery. Right? We're talking about very, very few people. I've actually personally never met any who have profitably traded penny stocks over long periods of time to make money. Now, there are some out there in the world, I'm sure. Again, I just haven't met them in person. I'm not saying it doesn't work, but here's what I will say. Risk is the key. Don't always focus on the money. Focus on how much you can lose. So let's talk about this. Uh, this is uh, just uh, some random penny stock, P-U-L-M comes up on these penny stock scanners. I follow a lot of these penny stock guys on Twitter. And usually the first thing you're gonna be looking for is volume. Volume's gonna come in, and this means that people are getting interested. Now, unfortunately, uh, this is often uh, the time where pump and dump schemes get really popular with penny stocks, right? People saying, hey, you should buy this, and everyone gets in, and then you know it creates this emotion, creates this wave. And it's not a bad thing to get in on something like this, right? If, the, uh, if you can get in and get out, that's the key, that's the objective. So volume is going to be one of the things that you wanna look for uh, as part of the penny trade or the penny stock trade. It's gonna be about volume. Uh, now, let's talk about the risk, okay? Because that's really what I wanna talk about and we're gonna cover everything else uh, in future videos. So with volume coming in, this would be a breakout trade. And you, know, you would have heard about this penny stock trade more than likely until right about here, probably. But let's just say that you did catch the actual breakout or at least the retest of the breakout. Let's say you got in a dollar five. Here's the math, it's actually really simple. The math formula, boop, I'll put up on the screen right there, is as follows. What you wanna do is you want to determine how much money you are willing to lose. That's gonna be called your risk. And your risk is usually, or professionally, most traders say one to 2% of your account. Now, for those of you who are interested in trading penny stocks, you probably have a smaller account. We're talking $500, $1,000, $200, bucks, something like that. So you're gonna have to risk a little bit more in that situation. I get it, I totally understand. So let's pick a number like, oh, I don't know, 50, $50. So in this situation, what you gotta do is you gotta ask yourself, if you're gonna risk $50, what's worst case scenario on a penny stock? Worst case scenario is it goes to zero, which is often what happens on most penny stocks. They run eventually for a week or two and then they go to zero. So P-U-L-N not being much different, more than likely. Um, worst case scenario goes to zero. So let's say you bought it at $1. five. The formula in this case would look like your risk, so again, let's say it's $50, divided by the amount that you're buying the shares for. So $1.05, because again, if worst case it goes to zero, if you bought 47 shares total, in this example, 47 shares total, your investment would be 47 uh, shares times $1.05, which is 50 bucks. So if you bought in for $50 and worst case it goes to zero, how much did you lose? You lost 50. Rather than losing your entire account, you only lost $50. Now, this math can be done in other ways. Let's say that you are comfortable getting out on a trade. Let's say you do some analysis 
and you have another pre another price or place that you're willing to exit the trade. This is called your stop loss. Very, very important to use. All professional traders use them, those traders who actually uh, make money, that is. And P-U-L-M, let's say you got in at a dollar five and your stop loss was 41 cents. From here, you simply take the exact same formula. So you take your risk, in this case, let's just call it 50 bucks, and you, you take the difference between the two. So a dollar five minus 41 cents equals 64 cents. $50 divided by 64 cents equals 78 shares. So 78 is the amount of shares that you would buy at a dollar five and that you would exit at 41 cents. If the trade works, you make money. If the trade doesn't, you have an amount of money that you are comfortable and okay and willing to lose before getting into the trade. And that's huge with penny stocks because again, if you approach it with risk variables rather than profit variables, the quote from Warren Buffett goes, the stock market is a great dictator between who is patient and wealthy and impatient and broke. So bottom line, if you focus on risk rather than profits, if you control the risk, the profits take care of themselves, right? Rule number one in trading, don't lose money, Warren Buffett. Rule number two in trading, see rule number one. That's why risk is very, very key. Uh, so with, again, with any penny stock that you're trading, that's gonna be the formula that's really good to approach. Let's look at one more. Uh, let's go look at uh, NAKD, and then I'll pull up another one um, in just a moment that uh, one of my buddies was looking at. So let's look at this particular stock, and this is gonna be, you know, this is the weekly chart. So we're just gonna really, really zoom out. This looks kind of textbook penny stockish, right? When I say textbook penny stock, uh, it means that the stock has just gotten absolutely shredded. Um, looks like it's had a pop or two in the past and got just destroyed again, and then a lot of volume is coming in for whatever reason. Maybe the stock is on Twitter, people are putting on their blogs, it's in the, you know, the news articles, whatever. So whatever the stock is, Naked Brand Group. And here's the daily chart on it right now. So again, let's say in this particular example, um, you're not in and you're looking at it and you're trying to figure out where to get in. Well, formula, again, let's say that your risk is 50 bucks. And you're saying, what's the lowest this stock could go? Answer, obviously zero. So you would take 50 divided by $2.42, and that would equal 20 shares. So if your risk was 50, you would know exactly how many shares to buy based on this particular stock being $2.42, if worst case scenario, it went to zero. Now again, if you're actually looking at the chart, that's one of my recommendations. If you're trading a penny stock, make sure to pull it up, look at it visually, see it with your eyes, about what it's doing and determine where a good place to enter would be. So in this situation, let's say you had a stop loss at $1.91 and you wanted to enter this trade, I don't know, above here. So what you're looking at is you wanted to see this trade uh, break out higher. So you actually are gonna wait for the breakout. So in this situation, you're looking at this candle wick, 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 and you want it to break out above there, breaking out of this triangle type of formation. So you're gonna get in. So this is $3 and your stop loss is $1.91. So same rule applies, right? Take your risk, $50, and then you do the math. $3 minus $1.91, uh, pretty easy math, $1.09, $50 divided by $1.09, 50 divided by $1.09 equals 45 shares. And so again, you know, and you can have a, you have a comfortable amount of how many shares you're willing to risk. Folks, this is key. It's like this in a casino. Do you know why casinos have table limits? If you're playing roulette or craps or even poker, do you know why they have some type of limit? Is because it does not protect the casino, it protects you. Because people will lose all of their money in hopes to make more. So with any penny stock that you find, pull it up in a charting software, look at it, visually determine and see what it's doing, and then mathematically calculate your risk that you're comfortable with on the particular trade. Okay, so that's just two examples. Let's go look at one more really quick, talk a little bit about it, and describe the differences between penny stocks and something called options. All right, awesome. So uh, this is a uh, stock that I got from one of my buddies on Facebook, messaged me just, just 
just today, actually, about this uh, TVOG. No idea what this stock is, no clue what it is, but this is even more of a penny stock. So you'll notice, look down here in the bottom right-hand side, abysmal volume, very, very light. Well, I shouldn't say abysmal. I've seen much worse, but it's pretty terrible. Um, you know, a few hundred thousand shares per day. And then again, zooming out, I mean, just look at this choppy, choppy data. So you're not getting much of anything at all. And this is what people, when they invest in penny stocks, they often want to buy the, you know, 20 cent or two penny stock per share. And then, oh, looks like that stock, that company uh, now found an oil field in this particular part of the world and your shares go from two cents to 400 bucks. That's what everyone's doing it for, right? I get it. Honestly, that doesn't happen. Most people bring up the example of Apple or Microsoft, you know, hey, if you had just bought Apple or Microsoft and the IPO'd, you know, but the problem is when you buy a stock like Apple or Microsoft when IPOs, you, you have a product. So for example, when Snapchat IPOs, you can use Snapchat. Something like this, TVOG, Turner, something oil and gas. I have no idea what this company is, who they are, what they make, what they do, what they provide. I just have no idea. So I'm pulling this up. Uh, the other thing to notice is, check this out right here, the symbol OTC, this stands for over the counter. So over the counter means it's not traded on the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ. Some brokers won't even allow you to trade over the counter stocks, number one. And number two, over the counter is not nearly regulated as much as the New York Stock Exchange. So when people are losing their money, like in Wolf of Wall Street, when he was talking about pink sheet stocks, this is what pink sheet stocks are. Over the counter, pure garbage, bid ass spreads are high, the market is wild, no idea what's going on. I mean, just look at the price fluctuation. Again, I'm zooming in here, just look at this. There's days where shares don't even get traded. You know, it opens at two tenths of a cent, trades higher, it means, anyway, just ridiculous. So these kind of stocks, very, very hard to chart, very hard to get in, get out of, can't really see what's going on, can't determine what's going on. Um, yeah, so it's really, really difficult. And again, this is just a pure example of what a penny stock is. And obviously everyone hopes and wants the stock to break out. You know, you buy it at two cents and it goes to 400 bucks. Everyone wants that. But if you like penny stocks, you can always learn something called stock options. And stock options, you can trade on companies like Apple. And you can trade these stocks uh, for very, well, not should say very inexpensive, but inexpensively enough. So for example, back in January 17th, 2017, which is back over here, uh, I was mentioning Apple getting in into a June call option. So June call option for $5.80. Meaning if you had 580 bucks, you could have bought one option on Apple. The option on Apple presently is over $20 in value. Meaning I bought something for $5.80 and now it's worth over 20. So if you're doing the math, that is almost a 400% return. And it's not trading some random uh, oil field operation in South New Jersey. It's, it's Apple, right? The biggest company in the world. So if you like the returns of penny stocks, if those intrigue you, my simple suggestion is learn options and at least you can compare the two. Right? At least you can determine, do I want to trade penny stocks or do I want to trade options? Do I want to trade with the big boys, the professionals, the people who are making money day in and day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out? Or do I want to gamble, play roulette, play blackjack, play poker, play craps, and trade penny stocks? You get to make that determination, you get to make that call. Okay, so I know that was a really, really quick overview of options. Here's the deal. There's one company on this planet that does not charge anything for its education. It's called Real Life Trading, and I'm the owner of that company. If you wanna learn more about options, click that link right there, and it'll take you to a video where you can learn about options entirely for free. Again, zero sales pitch at all. But I do appreciate you watching this video. If you have any questions about a particular paint stock you're in, or just anything else in general, my email address is jeremy at reallifetrain.com. I do have an automatic robotic dog that replies to all my emails. I'm just kidding. I reply to all my emails. Email me. I'll help you out. You absolutely rock. Thanks for watching this video. Have a great day. Remember, love life, live life, and trade it. You rock. Bye.